Kyle Tall trolls Bobby Fischer with Sicilian defense. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the seventh video of the Nidorf Variation series. In this video, we are going to have a look at one of the most famous games in the chess history. The player of the white side is the legendary Bobby Fischer, and the black player in this game is the magician of Riga, Mikhail Tal. This game has been played in 1959, and Bobby Fischer was still a young player at that time, and he came with his King pawns move pawn to e4, and Mikhail Tal replied with Sicilian defense. At the beginning of this game, Mikhail Tal first touched his c pawn to c6, and then have a look at Bobby Fischer's eyes, and then decided to play c5. And with this kind of play, Tal started a psychological game against young Bobby Fischer, and this, I guess, put some pressure on Bobby Fischer. Fischer replied with knight of 3 d6. We have open Sicilian. And here we go, Sicilian Nidorf. Mikhail Tal likes to play sharp and dynamical chess positions, so Sicilian Nidorf for sure is one of his choices. Bishop to c4, Fischer Susin attack. This attack is one of the most dangerous attacks against Sicilian Nidorf. The bishop is very active, but Tal says, you know what, I'm just going to stop your bishop to attack my king. And here bishop goes to b3. This move is a prophylactic move. It prevents b5 in many lines. The bishop lands on b3. So if black plays b5, it doesn't come with a tempo. Bishop b3 and bishop b7. Black completes his development. Now pawn to f4 come. This is how they attack in this fischer Susin attack. They want to push f5. This is a strategical idea. Most of you might think this is a very attacking idea. White wants to crash black king, but it's not the case. The main reason for this move is that white wants to attack the dark light squares, wants to play f5 at some points, and let's see, let's see, for example, here if f5 plays, this is not the actual game, then black can reply with e5, for example, and then the good day for white is a day that he plays bishop g5, he takes on f6, and he secures the d5 square. If these things happen, then black uh, is in trouble. He has a weakness on d5 and his pawn on d6 is weak. So this is a very nice strategical idea to attack the works white white color squares. At some points white might have e5 also, but Paul says I'm not going to be afraid of your ideas. And here queen of three kings, this is another idea to bring the queen to the attack. So in some cases queen can come to g3, attacks the king. In some cases it can play e5. For example, imagine bishop b3, long castle. This is how they play against Sicilian defense and e5. But Mikhail says, Paul says, you know what? I'm just going to play queen c7. There is no uh, worries for me. I'm in my uh, case. You cannot play e5 now. I might play b5. I might play knight c6. And the queen on c7 is very good. And black is also anticipating something like bishop b3, long castle, and the rook coming to the d line. So the queen on c7 is safe. Now short castle and pawn to b5. Black starts his counterattack. Now he wants to play bishop b7, attacks the knight on, uh, attacks the pawn on e4, and some cases he wants to play b4 also. Here Fischer plays f5, which I'm not quite sure of. Perhaps some moves like a3 was better. After f5, it's obvious that black wants, white wants something like this. After e5, he probably will play knight d5. And after take, take, this is not a dream scenario, but in this position, at least, at least at the end, white, black has this problem of this d5 square, and his bishop is not good, but black has enough compensation. I mean, knight d7, rook c8, has a very dynamical play on the queen side, so it's not over for black, but Paul even replied better. He started with pawn to b4. He attacks the knight on c3. So now if the knight moves away, then black can simply play e5 and there is, this knight is no longer can achieve this d5 square. This is a very critical position of this game. I guess Fischer should have took on e6 and after b takes c3, he should have sacrificed this piece. And for example here, maybe, maybe even queen takes c3. Chess.com engine suggests queen takes c3 and it says, okay, if, if the queens are going to be exchanged, then you're going to play bishop a3, this pawn on f7 is good, and it even suggests that black should 
play something like rook a7 or queen b7 to keep his advantage. But nevertheless, Bobby Fischer replied with knight to a4 and now e5. And look at this position. This knight can no longer achieve this square. And this knight is under rim. So it's a dim piece and it cannot come back to the game very easily. And now Bobby and Mikhail Tal just simply plays bishop b7, attacking the pawn on e4, forcing knight g3, and here knight to d7. Very, very harmonic development by black pieces. This bishop is excellent. This knight is attacking this piece. And the weaknesses of black's camp, the pawn, the pawn on d6 and the uh, square on d5, are not available for white pieces. So he plays bishop to e3, developing. And now bishop to c6, putting pressure on this knight on the rim. Now queen a5 might be a threat in the near future. So white should be very careful. And here he plays bishop to f2. This is not a good move. Uh, perhaps c4 is the better idea, but it's very hard. For example, after c4, if queen a5 plays, the reason is that you have now queen d1 or even a3 in some lines to, to open this rook's file. But in the game, Bobby Fischer plays bishop f2, and you might say, hang on a second, what's going to happen after queen a5? But the reason is that white has a3. He was relying on this a3 move, so if take, bishop takes a4, then we have a takes b4. And now, white has a very great advantage. He exchanged his bad knight with black's good bishop, and after a while, black, white can might play, might play even knight d2, knight c3, knight to d5. The rook is defending the e4 square so black should be very careful to not be tempted to play queen a5 this is a very wrong decision and for sure Mikhail Tal plays queen to b7 attacking the pawn on e4 and now rook to e1 pawn to d5 this is the liberating move for black's position this liberating move if it happens in a right place and in a right moment then black is completely okay I mean it's more than okay in this position black is very excellent position look at this knight look at look at white pieces there is no harmony in bobby fisher's game but if you look at mikhail tall's pieces they are all in great place and now this bishop is open this bishop is going to have a very very powerful effect on white's king so he should take and now knight takes d5 for sure we are not going to trade our bishops because we have here we have the attacking bishop on white's kings this bishop is attacking but not very powerful there is nothing to attack Knight d4. Even engine suggests to bishop takes d5 in this position, but look after this. My white might just probably play this position and hope that he can save it, but it's very hard. Look at this knight. In all of the variations, this knight is a terrible piece. So he plays knight d4, and now knight comes to f4. Opening the diagonal, knight is attacking the king. So very bad news for white. Pawn to c4. He wants to establish some control over center some he wants to gain some space i don't know maybe bishop g3 maybe other moves maybe c3 to start some tension in the queen side but after c4 a very excellent move by mikhail tall g6 a move that most of us will not consider in this position probably we play rook a d8 or playing slowly in this position it's also a good idea but in some positions, you need to take action, and g6 is the action that Mikhail Tov is taking. He wants to take on f5. I mean, it's very strange. And maybe the best way is to just close the line and play f6, but after knight takes f6, white is completely lost. But in the game, Fischer took here and pawn to f5. This is, this is, this is fantastic play by Mikhail Tov. He, he's, he's, he's in very good shape. It was, this game is 1959, Mikhail Tal was at his top of chess and Bobby Fischer was still young, so there is a big difference between these two. If c7, c5 plays here, just king g7, there is no worries, this bishop is not going to do anything. So just, just take it easy. And now g7 plays, king takes g7, even rook f7 is playable, but king takes g7 very, very easily, king goes to h8. And here you might say, okay, white's knight run away, but now, now look at this diagonal. It's going to be a very, very big problem for white. Black just simply took, took this one also. Maybe, maybe here bishop takes g2 already is over. It's over. Even Sejin suggests bishop f6 to defend this, but Paul says, okay, you know what? I'm just playing very safely. I'm defending my e5 pawn. The only thing that you're attacking 
your knight on c5 is not good. Uh, just mm, know that queen b6 is rook takes e5 is white is in back in the game, so you should not allow any kind of counterplay. Queen c7, very simple. Black side yes to play rook g8 and to annihilate black white's king. He goes queen e3, rook to e8. Just very simple prophylactic moves. We have an excellent bishop, powerful knight, and all of our pieces are in harmony. Rook e2, he even is frustrated, Bobby Fischer is frustrated because he cannot defend this. And if he plays g3, then knight h3, and after something like king f1, any kind of move probably win, but f4 is the most straightforward win. So white cannot play this. I mean, white is in big danger, so he plays rook e2, he says, please take my rook. Paul says yes. And even it's interesting to know that rook g8 is also winning, but knight e2, and now bishop takes g2, because the queen is now attacking the knight, and after knight takes a6, queen check, rook check, and here maybe we are expecting queen takes a6, but then queen takes e5, and white gets some play, but queen to g7, queen h6 check is mate threat. We shoot to d1 to, to bring the queen to h5, with queen h6, queen h5, and the last move of this game is rook to e6. I don't know it's the best way it mates in 4. I don't know why engine says it's not the best idea. If a3 plays rook h6, and if queen h5, then queen to g2 check. And here we have queen takes h2, and it's checkmate. Bobby Fischer resigned after rook to e6. A brilliant game by Mikhail Paul. A game that we can learn a lot of things from this game. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if this is the case, please support our videos please like comment subscribe to my channel and remember always to enjoy chess and